Now I'm going to start with the second topic here, which is mappings. Uh, this is similar to the descriptions that we have done before, but this is a different application. Um, uh, the definition of mappings is change the description of a point from being relative to a frame to being relative to another frame. Okay. So as we did also earlier in the uh, description, we're going to take translation only and then we're going to take rotation only and then we're going to take a combination of translation and rotation uh, similar to what we did for descriptions. So when you have only translation, that means the second frame is translated without rotation relative to the first frame. And in this case, we can just go ahead and add the vectors. If you see here in this uh, drawing, we have frame A that includes X, Y, and Z A. And then we have frame B that includes X, Y, and Z B. Okay. And what we have here, we have point P that was described relative to frame B using P relative to B. Okay. So this here is a de description of point P relative to frame B. And what we would like to do is we would like to describe P relative to frame A. So we need to find P relative to frame A. And we already know the relationship between frames B and A through this vector, the green vector, which is P of B origin relative to A. Okay? So this is a given. This is a given. And I need to find this. All right? So very simple, add vectors. So P relative to A, that's the one here in, in blue, equals to P relative to B, which is the one here in green. That's the original uh, definition of P relative to frame B, plus P of B origin relative to frame A. And that's what you see here in green as well. Okay, so I add this and this vector, the green vectors, to find the blue vector. Now let's take an example on translation only. Frame B is translated 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. Find P relative to A if P relative to B equals to 3, 7, and 0 transpose. What transpose here means is that this is not a row actually, it's a column. Okay, so 3, 7, and 0 instead of being in row, just save some space and uh, put it as a row and transpose so it's actually in a column format. So we're given P, B already. We're given P of the origin of B relative to A through these uh, this sentence here. So B is translated 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. So all what we have to do is add these two vectors to find P relative to A. So if you recall here, P relative to A equals to P relative to B plus P of B origin relative to A. This is given. Okay, it's 3, 7, and 0 right here. So that's a column in column format. Plus P B origin, it's given here as 10 units in XA. That's we have 10 units here. And 5 units in YA, so we have 5 units here. And there's no mentioning of any units for ZA, so we put 0 here. Okay. So if we add these two vectors, you just add element to element, we add these two vectors, we get 13, 12, and 0, which is the definition of point P relative to frame A. Now let's take an in-class exercise. I'd like you to do this on your own. Uh, frame B is translated 12 units in XA and 7 units in YA and negative 3 units in ZA. Find P relative to A if P relative to B is negative 6, 13, and 9 transpose. I'm going to pause here for a few seconds, and I'd like you to solve this on your own. Please pause the video, and once you're done, you can come back here and unpause so that you can see the answer. Okay, assuming that you have done the answer already, I'm going to put the solution. So P relative to A again equals to P relative to B plus P B origin relative to A. P relative to B is given directly here. Okay, so that's negative 6, 13, and 9 right here. And then P 
B origin relative to A is given right here. That's the translation of B. 12 units in XA, right here. And then 7 units in YA, right here. And negative 3 units in ZA, which is right here. If we add these element to element directly, we get 6 and 20 and 6, which is the answer for the definition of P relative to frame A. Now let's look at mapping when we have only rotation. So this is rotation without translation. The second frame is rotated without translation relative to the first frame. In this case, multiply by the rotation matrix that we have between uh, the two frames. So this uh, graph here shows you that relationship. We have frame A in black and frame B in red. And the relationship between them is a rotation that rotates which has a definition of rotation matrix defining B relative to A. Okay. And then we have point P here defined as a point relative to frame B. That's the green line that you see right here. So if we are defining P relative to frame B relative to the red frame, okay, that would be P relative to B right here. And what we need to find is we need to define P relative to frame A. Okay, A is the black line. So to define P relative to the black line, frame A, that gives us this in blue, frame uh, that uh, P relative to frame A. Okay, so this definition will be different. Uh, I mean, it looks like, of course, the point is the same. The vector here would be different because one of them is relative to frame A and one of them is relative to frame B. Okay, so P relative to A equals to the rotation matrix that defines B relative to A multiplied by P relative to B. Okay, so what we have to do is just pre-multiply P relative to B by the rotation matrix that defines B relative to A. All right, so if we do this, uh, just think about it this way. The way I like to look at this is B here at the top goes with B here at the bottom. These go together. And then what's left is A, which is similar to what we have here in the answer. Okay, if you think about it this way, it becomes easy for you to know what are you multiplying here. Okay, so A and B here, and we have B here. So B cancels with B. Just, you know, thinking about it, of course, that physically doesn't mean anything. So if B cancels with B, then A is what's left, and that's what we have in the answer. Okay? Uh, think about it as numerator and denominator, for example. B and B, they cancel each other. All right, so having this here, uh, multiplication will give you the answer that defines P relative to A. Now let's take an example here on the rotation only. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about z-axis by 30 degrees. Find R B relative to A, then find P relative to A if P relative to B is 0 to 0 transpose. Okay, so we're given here directly P relative to B, and we are given here that we have rotation about z-axis by 30 degrees, so from here we can find rotation that describes B relative to A, and once we have that, then we can multiply by this and find P relative to A. Okay, so let's first find the rotation matrix, rotation of B relative to A. We have rotation about Z axis, so that means this will be one, and then the remainder of the column and row would be zeros and zeros. And then here we have cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of the rotation angle, which is 30 degrees. Okay? So if we do this, we can leave it in this format, or we can evaluate these cosines and sines. Uh, cosine 30 is, is 0.866, and then sine 30 is 0.5. So either of these two would be fine. Uh, you can evaluate this, or you can leave it as a sine and cosine of the angle. Okay? Then find P relative to A if P relative to B is given as such. So for that, we know that P relative to A equals to rotation matrix of B relative to A times P relative to B. As we said earlier, just to know that the arrangement is correct, remember that B 
at the top here and B at the bottom here have to be the same. Okay, just think about it as if they cancel each other. And then A is what's left, which is what we have right here. So let's substitute P relative to A equals to rotation matrix, which we just found here, times P relative to B, which is right here. It's given directly, this. And if we do this multiplication, then we can find out that this would be equal to negative 1, 1.732, and 0. Okay, so that would be my final answer for this example. Now let's take an in-class exercise. I'd like you to do this on your own. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about y-axis by 60 degrees. Find R B relative to A, then find P relative to A if P relative to B is 3, 0, negative 5 transpose. I'm going to pause for a few seconds. Please pause this video while you're doing this exercise. And once you're done, you can resume so that you can see the answer to this exercise. Okay, assuming that you're done with solving this exercise, I'm going to show you the solution here. The rotation matrix, since the rotation is about Y, that means the middle element here is 1, and the remainder of the row and column will be zeros. And then we have cosine, sine, and negative sine. Remember, this is negative because it's rotation about Y, and cosine of the angle that was given that's 60 degrees here. Okay, so that gives me the rotation matrix. And then if I multiply the rotation matrix times PB, that's given here, that will give me P relative to A. And just doing this multiplication will give me this answer directly. So if you look at this and this example, here I evaluated the final numbers. Here I left everything, the final answer, but I did not evaluate the cosine and sines of uh, 60 degrees. So this is an acceptable final format of, of a solution. And this is also an acceptable final format of the solution. Either of these will be fine, and both of these will give you full grade uh, if you don't know how to, uh, or maybe the angle here is too complicated to calculate without a calculator.